In this video, we're going to look at how you can import multiple files containing multiple sheets with Power Query, even if the data isn't formatted in an Excel table. In other words, the worst data layout ever. Let's take a look. In this folder, I've got three Excel files, and you'll notice the file name contains the date. This is going to be important because you'll see that the data inside the files doesn't have any date information. Here I have the January file open. You can see it contains eight sheets, one for each product category, and each sheet contains the sales values by product. Notice that the data isn't formatted in an Excel table, nor is it in a named range. And my goal is to consolidate the data from each sheet in all three files into a single table. So I'm going to copy the folder path from Explorer. So I'm just gonna go back to the folder level and with it selected on the Home tab, I'm going to choose Copy Path. And I'll go back to Excel. I'm going to close this file because I can't get data from an open file. And in a new workbook, we're going to go to the Data tab. I'm going to get data from file, from folder. And because I copied my folder path, I'm just going to Control V to paste it in. Now I need to delete the double quotes that are at the beginning and end of the folder path. I'll click OK. Here I can see a list of the files in that folder and I want to transform the data. And this opens the Power Query Editor window and let me bring it across. And you can see it contains some metadata about each file. Now I only want to keep the content column and the name column. And the only reason I'm keeping that name column is because it contains the date information. So I'm going to right click and remove the other columns. Now in order to extract the content, I need to add a custom column. So on the Add Column tab, Add Custom Column. And here I'm going to use the Excel.Workbook function to extract the data from the content column. So I'm just double clicking to add that to my formula. Close parentheses on Excel.Workbook and click OK. And now I can expand the tables by clicking the double-headed arrow at the top, and I'll click OK. Now if we look in the custom.kind column, we can see a list of all the objects in the files. Now I only have sheets, but if you're importing files that contain tables or named ranges, then they'll be listed here as well. And it's in this column that you can filter out any objects that you don't want. I don't need to filter anything because I want to get all of the sheets so we're going to leave it as is, but your data might be slightly different to mine, so keep that in mind. Now if I click in the white space beside the word table in the custom data column, we get a little preview at the bottom. Let me make this bigger so you can see. And this gives me a view of the data that's contained in that object. So on that sheet, we can see the data and we can see in the custom name and custom item columns that this is for the beverages sheet. If I click in the next one, these are the condiments and confections and so on. So this is the data that I'm going to consolidate into one table. Now before I expand the data in these tables, I want to remove all the columns that I don't want in my final data set. We're always going to want custom data. I also want the custom name because this is my category. Equally, I could choose custom item, but custom name will do the job. And I want the name, the file name columns, because this contains my date. So with those three selected, I'm just holding down shift to select them. I'm going to right click and remove other columns. So these will be the fields that make up my new file and I'm ready to expand my tables. So clicking on the double headed arrow, I'm going to deselect user original column name as prefix and I'll click OK. Now if I scroll down, you can see the data from each of the sheets and each of the files. You can see this is all the January file and now we're into the February file. So scrolling back to the top, I want to promote this first row as my header. So I can click on this down arrow here and use first row as headers. Now we have our product, our sales amounts. Beverages, well let's rename this one, so I'm going to double click to rename it. This is the category, and this one here is the file name. Now the headers from the other sheets are still in my data set. We can see one here, and if I scroll down, 
there's another one. So I want to filter these rows out of my data. And we can do this by either selecting the sales column and filtering out all instances of sales, or we can use the product column. I'm going to go with the product column and filter out product. So there it is there, I'm going to deselect it and click OK. Now at this point you may be finished. However, in this example, remember I don't have any date information. It's currently in my file name here, but it's not formatted in a date. So I need to convert this to a proper date. First of all, I want to just extract the date and discard the .xlsx. So on the transform tab, we're going to extract the first characters and I want the first seven characters that will give me just the date information. Next, I need to separate the month from the year. So we can split the column again on the transform tab. We'll split it by delimiter and we'll use the underscore as the delimiter. You can see it's automatically detected that I want a custom delimiter and it's populated it for me. So I don't need to do any more other than click OK. So now I have my month and my year information. All I need to do is join them back together to make a proper date. So I'm going to add a column, a custom column. This will be my date column. And I'm going to use the date function to rebuild my date. The arguments for the date function are year, month, and day. So if I just move this down a bit, we can see file name two contains my year. So let's put that in. File name one contains my month. So we'll put that in. And I'm just going to add a one for the first day of each month. So all of my dates are going to be the, for the first of each month. And that's fine for this example. So I'll click OK. And there's my date column. I don't need these columns anymore. So just selecting them and press the delete key to get rid of them. Now all I need to do is tidy up my data types and maybe rearrange the columns. So clicking on the icon here, I can select the date data type. And now all of my dates are proper date data types. This one here needs to be a decimal number for the sales amounts. And category and product are text already, so they're fine. I don't need to change anything there. The only thing I might want to do is rearrange the order. So I can left click and drag. So we go category, product, sales, and then the date. Lastly, let's give this query a better name. This name will be the name of the table when you load it into Excel or Power Pivot. So with my query name updated, I'm ready to load my data. So on the Home tab, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. Here I get to choose where I want the data placed. So the default is a table in the current workbook, but we can load it straight to a pivot table report, a pivot chart. Perhaps you only want to create a connection because you want to add it to the data model, which is Power Pivot. I'm going to pop it in a table on the existing worksheet, which is Sheet 1 and I'll click OK. So there you can see I've consolidated the data into a single table. So we have three files with eight sheets in each file, all in one table, ready to analyze. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. I hope you can make use of this technique. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.